Welcome to my chambers. When President Trump's lawyers suggested last August that he stop attacking Robert Mueller's investigation by calling it a witch hunt, they also said, don't worry about it. It's not about you and it'll be over by Thanksgiving. Well, we now know that Thanksgiving is over and the investigation is still going on. His lawyers are not serving him well. They are disputing and feuding publicly about the level of cooperation that they should provide to the independent counsel, Mr. Mueller, the former FBI director. Some of the president's lawyers want to give Mueller everything he's asking for, saying Donald Trump has nothing to hide and nothing to fear from the public revelation of truthful information. Other lawyers are saying, hey, he's the president of the United States. Why should we be surrendering subserviently all the documents, all the internal materials that we use to run the White House to this investigator who hasn't charged us with anything. <clears throat> the dispute between these lawyers is being resolved by General Kelly. He's not a lawyer, but who is the president's chief of staff. But the issue is a serious one. You see, President Trump and General Flynn, Michael Flynn, the former national security advisor, entered into a written agreement. Their lawyers did called a joint defense agreement in which the lawyers agreed they would cooperate with each other, they would share information with each other, and anything one team heard from the government would be shared with the other team. And then they said, we will sink or swim together, we won't point fingers at each other. Until last Wednesday, after the president had left the White House for the Thanksgiving holiday weekend, which he was spending at his Florida estate. General Flynn's lawyers sent a letter to the White House saying we're no longer in this agreement because they are talking to Bob Mueller. That is very significant. The general's lawyers are negotiating a deal with the special prosecutor. What could General Flynn give the special prosecutor in return for the special prosecutor reducing the prison exposure of 60 years, which the general is facing if he's charged and convicted with everything for which they have evidence against him. We don't know what the general has. We don't know what he says he has. But he's willing to discuss it with the prosecutor and that's not good news for the president. None of us should rejoice about this. Whatever you think of the president's policies, whatever you think of his personalities, his personality, he's the lawful elected president of the United States. And we all should be concerned when the special prosecutor is getting too close. Welcome to my chambers. Fight the good fight. For freedom! Hi, Judge Andrew Napolitano here, and you are on Freedom Watch with my guest and good friend and colleague, Juan Williams. He's a Fox News political analyst, a co-host of the great show, The Five, here on Fox News Channel. And he's the author of the book, We the People, a book I was happy to read and pleased to endorse. Thank, thank you. So you saw the President of the United States earlier this week sitting between two empty chairs in the Roosevelt Room. And in front of one of the chairs, it said Nancy Pelosi. And in front of the other, it said Charles Schumer. OK, I, I get the idea of a prop and trying to, trying to win the moment with a photo op. Can Donald Trump negotiate with Democrats, Democrats whom he repeatedly insults? Well, that's the problem. So this started with the tweet in which the president indicated that he didn't have any deal that he thought was acceptable on the budget so that he couldn't really negotiate with the Democrats, that they would have to come to him and say, Mr. President, here are some concessions we're willing to make in order to make the deal. The Democrats saw that as a business ploy by the businessman Donald Trump that was intended to put them at a disadvantage at the start of the negotiation and withdrew. Now, a lot of people said, well, they should be willing to go talk to the president. He's the president. But from their perspective, I think they were trying to level the playing field. All right. So Pelosi and Schumer are pros. Do they really take it to heart when he insults them? Are they really sore when he insults them? Or is their response to those insults, and, and I think they are insulting the things he often says about right. them, no is their response to those insults just a negotiating technique? I think at this point it's just a negotiating technique. Um, you know, part of this equation begins way back when the president had an interim budget deal made, struck, 
and everything got pushed back to the end of the year to December. Right. That was a tremendous win for the Democrats because it put the president and Republicans in a box with regard to a government shutdown. Right. They've got to make a deal in a short frame here, and he, the president needs 60 votes. Okay, so this is not like the tax bill that he is attempting to push through with no Democratic votes. Right. This cannot happen without at least eight Democrats in the Senate, assuming he gets all the Republicans. Assuming he gets all the So Republicans. he has to negotiate with Chuck Schumer at some point. No question. So the question is, are the Democrats of good faith and understanding, or do they think it's to their political advantage to force a government shutdown? Okay. Can he do the opposite of what he's now threatening to do? Can he basically say to, basically say to the Republicans, go take a hike. I only need a few of you. I have all the Democrats on my side. Wow, that would be different. You know, this is interesting because when he's done this in the past... He did do this one time in the past. I forget what it was yeah, for. No, no, no. He alienated a lot of Republicans because right. he was willing to make a deal with Chuck and Nancy. And whatever the deal was, it happened. Yes. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, it, it's a reminder, Judge, that Donald Trump is sui generis. And you being a great lawyer, you would know that means one of a kind. Right. <laughs> one of a kind. He is not a Republican as we normally think of Republicans. In fact, his big supporters on talk radio, on the Internet, Steve Bannon, regularly go after Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. And in that situation, what you would get President Trump saying is, I am not only one of a kind, but I am above all others. All right. So are you telling me, last question. If Donald Trump serves a full four-year term, there's going to be more and more and more of this unpredictability and in your face. Judge, did you just say if? <laughs> you don't think you, you think you I'm think it, you think it might be? I'm challenging. I don't know. But if if he ser if he serves four years, I suspect that it, this becomes far more common. Yes, that he will do deals with anyone he can do a deal with. He is hungry. He needs the tax bill right now. Because he's got nothing. He's got to show something. And so even year. though, in my opinion and in public opinion, because the public opinion polls are clear, it's not a good deal, he wants to claim a win. And that same imperative would be at play in subsequent years. Got it. Would you agree with me that the Republicans who are cheering this tax bill on are the elites and the office holders? It's not the base. And nowhere close to the base. Unbelievable what they're trying to. Uh, it, it's kind of shocking because yes. it's not good for the country. Yes, I know my taxes are going to go up. And right, course, yeah. Go I don't get, I, and middle class, it, the Trump's base, his supporters, their taxes are going up. Got it. Juan, always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. From New York, defending freedom whenever they let me, Judge Andrew Napolitano. See you next time, America. All right, uh, Scott Hannon uh, every year brings folks from North Dakota, Fargo, North Dakota, and air the area that listen to his show on the flag, 1100 AM, here in New York City. You never pay for these people. They, they're on their own, right? They are. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're... Uh, we're Should we change that? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Do you talk about the show or the trip every year we on do. the radio yeah. and then people sign up to come with you? Yeah, my wife is the tour guide. She's hiding somewhere here. Where but is she? Uh, yeah, yeah. Maria's hiding. She's over here. No, she's in the, uh, yeah, she, yeah. So uh, anyway, she loves New York. She's kind of the fun tour guide. She puts the trip together. We go to a few different Broadway shows and we see, you know, all the sights. We like to be here for the lighting of the Christmas tree. So, yeah. And that's I, tonight. It is. Yeah. I love you that you do that because a lot of radio hosts or TV hosts, they we listen to you guys. We watch you on TV. But you seem unapproachable sometimes. You clearly are not. You and, and that's so well, isn't that amazing. Not is, is that? <laughs> well, thank you. I think we should organize a trip. Where are we going to go? Yeah, come to North Dakota. Yeah, we should. Take you. you. I saw Janine Pirro, one of our yeah. anchors. She's organizing a trip to Israel, inviting all the viewers out there to, to sign up for that. We, 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 yeah. We've got Bakken oil. Right? We've got unbelievable agriculture. We've got Carson Wentz, Miss America. What's not to love about what North was the Dakota? First one? Carson what was the, Wentz, Bakken oil. Bakken oil. Bakken shale. oil. Huge play of oil. Oh, Second shale. biggest oil producing state in the Union right now, wow, behind Texas. Wonderful. So, Thank a lot you. going on in North Dakota. You guys come see us. We would love to. All right. What's, what about the sweatshirt? This is uh, where our kids go, had gone to school. Okay. Shanley Deacons, John Paul II Catholic School Network in Fargo, North Dakota. So, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. You're going to be in their good graces now since you wore that on I TV. hope so. Well, it's a good enough school. We got one of our daughters to that school where oh, my wow, wife's wearing yeah. the sweatshirt from. Yeah, she's going freshman up there this year. Congratulations. So, yeah. That's wonderful. Well, it's really good to have you. Thank you very much.
very much. Uh, welcome to New York City. Oh, oh, you want a picture? picture? Sure. Okay. All right. Come on, get in here. Okay, all right. We're going to get in here. All right. You will be in the middle. Everybody's going to take a picture of it. All right. Who is the loudest one of the group? Lloyd. 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 Lloyd, do you want to say something on TV? Well, yeah. Am I live now? Yeah. Everybody back in North Dakota. I'm enjoying my trip very much. It's good to be here, too. Very good to be here. People are very nice. What do you love so much about his radio show? Well, he talks good sense. <laughs> and then over here we've got uh, my friends who uh, this man probably served with the uh, the old guard. Introduce yourself and your group. Uh, my name's Dave Barra. My wife Gail, yep. Donna, and Charlie Pringle. Yeah. And we're here uh, at your request. Uh, to kind of celebrate the Old Guard 20th reunion. That's right. Steve was speaking to the group and invited them to come to Fox and Friends, and they are from South Carolina. They, they are indeed. Street. Now, the surprise for them is they're from South Carolina, but they're going to North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Real pleasure. All right, that's it. We'll see you back Thank here tomorrow, you. everybody. Bye, everybody.